Hey guys, welcome to Cracker Games. This will be the first video to give you a quick idea of what I'm going to be uploading. This channel is going to be focusing mainly on the ever-expanding world of gaming and tech, and we will look into business practices and um, other news that is happening in this field. Historically, a lot of AAA games, and most games up until recently, have taken the pay-to-play model. This is because it makes a lot of sense to pay up front for the content that you're going to get. But with the rise of online marketplaces, but with the rise of online marketplaces, in-game purchases have become possible and have even been pursued by large corporations. This new way of making money has been known as DLC or downloadable content. While most people hate it, it does open the opportunity for games that would have otherwise costed $60 in the beginning to cost less in the beginning but rely on added DLC for their money with some games even going so far to be free at first, with downloadable content being their only source of revenue, such as Fortnite. But while DLC sounds great on paper, it doesn't necessarily mean it'll become the future of gaming. Now let's get into the pros and cons of each type of system. In recent years, AAA games have decided to start adding DLC on top of an already full-priced game. A lot of people are angry about this because the DLC doesn't even add to any of the content, but it's required in order to play the full game. So for some people, it feels like they've been robbed. Paying full price for a half-finished game and then being expected to pay 30 extra dollars for down-the-road DLC feels really cheap and leaves a bad taste in most consumers' mouths. However, this definitely doesn't mean that all DLC is bad. In fact, there are a bunch of games that have added DLC onto a full-priced game, but the DLC they added doesn't make the game full, it adds to the game in a way that wouldn't have otherwise been possible. It's a great way for companies to keep their consumers satisfied while they work on their next big title. But this definitely doesn't mean it's the norm. Most DLC is tacked on at the end of an unfinished game so they can make an extra few bucks. On the other side, there's free-to-play games. Now these might seem like the best thing since sliced bread, as they're free games that you don't necessarily have to pay any money for. However, this isn't the case. Most games that are free-to-play require extra money just so you can unlock the full gaming experience. However, there are some games that have done it right. Fortnite is one of those games. Fortnite's free-to-play model works incredibly well because their only microtransactions or in-game purchasing options are aesthetic. This is great because it means that purchasing doesn't give you an edge in the game. This is great because it means that nobody's being forced to buy anything they don't want to just to play the game. However, just because it's been done well a couple of times doesn't mean that it's the best option out there. In fact, a lot of these games lock most of their content behind paywalls, making them only playable or accessible through vast amounts of money, sometimes even exceeding that of a pay-to-play video game. One drawback to this, though, is that it's almost impossible to make an offline game free-to-play. Most free-to-play models require a want for aesthetic choice, which isn't really necessary in an offline game. So in the end, I'm sure the question on all of your minds is, do I think free-to-play game models are going to be the future? And the short answer, no. I do not believe that a free-to-play game model will be able to come to an offline game. And that leaves out a whole host of games that are have been and will continue to be very popular. With Game of the Year in 2018 being God of War, an offline game. So while free-to-play game models are great, if done well, they will never be the future of gaming. I think when done well, free-to-play game models are great, and when done poorly, they can be awful gaming experiences. But the same can be true of pay-to-play video games. So while I don't think that any one of them will be the future of gaming, I do think there is a future for both of them to continue. And hopefully game developers will start figuring out how to optimize both of them.